Hello, everyone. Susan Gerbic from Psychics Explained. Tyler Henry's back in the news again. He's got a Netflix show, and I hear the reviews are saying it's not so great. I haven't watched it, but I did pull up one of his videos that was just been a little over a week. I think it was released on September 16th, 2024. It is for a show called The Talk, and it is one of those shows that really focuses on gossip and celebrities and that kind of stuff. So um, it's just a really quick video. I'm not going to show all of it to you, but what is happening is that Tyler has is on the stay on the set, you know, sitting on the couch, and there's a female um, reporter, and then there's a male reporter sitting there, and she says, Tyler has got this new show, Netflix, blah, blah, blah. And she says, Tyler gave a reading to one of us. He didn't know who it was going to be. And then, you you know, the camera cuts to Tyler and he's like, no, I didn't know who it was going to be kind of look. And then this guy, his name is Jerry O'Connell. Now, don't come at me. I have no idea who the celebrities are. Really, I don't most of the time have a clue. Tyler Henry used that line for a very long time. And, you know, that's BS. I mean, he's the Hollywood medium. Of course, he knows who all these people are. But I still don't know who the woman is. I assume she's very famous and I just don't know. Sorry. But so Tyler is going to go do a reading for for um, one of those two. Now, it had already happened at this point. They're just they he had the reading done and now he's sitting on the couch for the talk. Now, the reading is they admit is heavily edited. Well, they say it's edited down for time which means heavily edited to remove anything that was not correct or <laughs> and only show the very best parts of the video of the reading. So what's really fascinating about this is that, you know, I'm trying to think, is a hot reading or cold reading? Hot reading or cold reading? So I'm going to go through my process with this because of course he knows he's either, he's going to be on the show, the talk, and he's going to read him or her, these famous people, so he's got plenty of time to find maybe four or five nuggets of information about their family or their love lives, their um, careers, financial, whatever, some some kind of bit that the, he can repeat back to him. Now, keep in mind, when somebody is hot reading, they don't have to find specific information. It's not like somebody's coming on the show and they say, well, he didn't know the name of my second grade teacher. No, it's any information that they find. It could be benign. It could be that they just came back from a vacation or that um, they you know, like to read. Or I mean, it could be a lot of different things, just something they pick up somewhere. Oh, we're being joined by Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton as cat. Um, so it could be pretty much anything that they pick up. And then when you relay it back, more obscure the better, but you don't want the person... You don't want it to be so obscure that the person doesn't know. So, for example, if their um, grandmother's maiden name was was Blumenthal, and and the psyche comes through and says, "I'm getting this name starts with a B, Bloom, and like the color Bloom, and and you know, is trying to get the sitter to say, "Oh my gosh, that's my grandmother's maiden name." Well, if the sitter doesn't know the grandmother's maiden name, then that's going to be lost, right? Even if the sitter remembers that years or afterwards, after the filming and says, oh, wow, he got that exactly right. It was, you know, my mom told me my mother's grand, my grandmother's maiden name was Blumenthal. It has to be done in that moment. So it can't be too obscure and it has to be enough that will not look like it's something they just picked up on, okay? So, <laughs> Hamilton has his opinion of this also. So let me show you the video really quick. The, um, the YouTube channel is called The Talk. And, <laughs> oh my gosh, how do we live without our cats? They just think we're just the bee's knees, don't they? Yeah, I know you did. Okay, so Hamilton, get out of the way. <laughs> so here's the show. It's called The Talk. It Now, 
you wonder about the media, why are they promoting these kinds of things? Well, because it makes money. So this channel, The Talk, has 159,000 subscribers. And this video has been out a little over a week and it already has 175,000 views. So either one person is just watching it over and over again <laughs> a lot of times, or it is uh, receiving more views than it has subscribers. So that's that makes money for the, the show. Plus, of course, when they aired it originally, that gave them viewer, viewers. And so, you know, Tyler Henner is a huge commodity for, for them. So they, you know, if they come, if they bring them on the show and they say, you know, Tyler Henry, we've been looking into your your history and we see that you have a, a long history of cold reading people and have been known to even hot raid people at times. And I, I want you to, <laughs> no, that's not going to float. No, that's not going to get viewers. It's going to get viewers. It's going to get a lot of mad viewers their subscriptions are going to go way down. People are going to be furious. Even if you show the tricks, uh, how it's done, nobody cares. They just don't. The only people who might care are the people who are watching this channel right now, Psychics Explain, because you guys care. And I hope you care enough to like and share my video. Leave me a comment too, by the way, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. So there's a little over 200 comments on here um, and they're all completely... Um, comments of how blessed Tyler is and what a joy he is and how it's a gift from God kind of comments. I'm the only one on there that's got a negative comment. I think it's a really good example to show you of cold reading because the the people who film this make a mistake. And I'm going to show you the interaction and then I'm going to and see if you catch it. And then I'm going to come back and see if um, maybe um, then you know, then we'll go over it. We'll see if, you know, write it in the comments. Let me know if you if you catch it like I did. So um, let's look at this again with audio. And let's see how well you do. So this starts at about a minute where, I mean, they're praising him, praising him, praising him, praising him. Now, Tyler says, you know, the big thing was he never knew who these people are. But let, let me play this a little bit. Jerry O'Connell! <laughs> How are, are you all really the stripes today? I hear about you. He practically jumps into his arms. I think that's just so awkward. You can see the cut there too. So this is done before, obviously, he's on the stage. Now at a minute, now he uses psychometry, which is the supposedly you touch things and there's some sort of essence or energy, energy or whatever in the object. This is a gimmick. Um, it's It's not real. Also, Tyler uses this scribbling method and it's become kind of his thing. Now, if you have been following my channel for a while or read some of the articles I've written, especially about Tyler Henry, I've been following him since the very beginning, 2016, when he turned up on this sh new show called Hollywood Medium. So I think of Tyler Henry as kind of like a boy band where somebody created him. And in the process of creating him, he uses a lot of different tactics that other mediums have used he picks from here he picks from there he picks from there and now the scribbling in the notebook has become his thing um, he's able to take those pages and, and hand them off to the person he gives a sitting for him and i guess they frame them or maybe put them on the refrigerator like your kids art or something <laughs> i don't know okay so here is uh jerry o'connell He's going to give him an object. Okay, wait, wait. I should come back to this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold your horses. Hold your raccoons. Okay, so when, before I started watching the the reading, I said, mm, Jerry O'Connell, he's a known person. Let's check him out. So I did. What would Tyler come up with? I just thought I'd play around with it, but I gave myself like 10 minutes. So let's just go over really quickly some of the things that I found and you tell me what you think. So here is his Wikipedia article. Now, I guess he's a very famous man. I don't know who he is. He's an actor. And as I'm going through here, the thing I, section I went to first was his personal life, because this has got information in here that might be um, relevant to something that Tyler Henry would find. Oh my gosh, who wrote this Wikipedia article? Look, O'Connell, 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 O'Connell. <laughs> Did every sentence have to start with O'Connell? 
Okay, you wouldn't be passing my Wikipedia training, that's for sure, if you did that. All right, so it, it talks about his actress um, uh, wife. And then if we go up here to the early life, you can see he's the eldest son of Linda, a special education teacher in New Jersey, and Michael O'Connor, who was working in the advertisement, a uh, director originally from the UK, half Irish, quarter Italian, quarter Polish ancestry. That all needs to be removed. That's ridiculous. Nobody needs that. So, and then we look down here, his, his maternal grandmother was from Belfast, Northern Ireland. His grandfather was Charles, who was a mayor of New York City, I mean, New Jersey, Jersey City, New Jersey. And so, and then it has his brother's name on here. So I looked at his brother's name, completely missing the fact that Charles is right here on the, um, mentioned as the maiden name of his mother. So it's Linda Witkowski. I went over to Ancestry and I found this little link, which is, uh, um, oh, not this one so much. This one. No, this one. No. Nope. Yeah, it was this one. So here's his mother and it shows that his mother was, you know, his, uh, when she was born, she's born in Belfast and it talks a little bit about her family members and so on. And then I also found an obituary that was tied to um his father his his grandfather which is charles and it talks about him loving football and how he's a head coach and how he um was a mayor of new jersey city and what years he was there and i thought okay well i can see where this is going it's going one way with uh mentions of football and mentions of um, being a person in charge and being a coach, you know, I, I could see lots of angles on that. And then I thought, okay, or it could be going about his mother um, or his grandmother, Florence. And I noticed this a little bit. Let me show, show you this too. It's interesting what you can pick up in some of these old newspaper articles. It, it, remember, this just took me a couple minutes to find. So one of the things I noticed that... Um, Florence has two daughters, Linda, O'Con who now is named O'Connell, and Marjorie, okay? She also has a sister named Marjorie. So it looks like that Florence and her husband, Charles, named their daughter, Marjorie, after her sister, Marjorie. So that's that's possible, all right? So that's one of those things that psychics love. I mean, gosh, that's like a, the giant trope in the psychic world. Who was named after somebody? I am getting somebody with a name that is that was handed down. Now, who would that be? And then, you know, they play off it like that. So, so this is where I'm going. I'm like, all right. So it looks like we got plenty. Ireland, a name that was passed down, a mayor, a, a coach for a high school football team and a football, plenty, plenty for Tyler. And it's also obscure enough that the um, sitter, Jerry, wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, you read that in my parents' obituary <laughs> or my grandparents' obituary. But a not obscure, too obscure this way you know, Jerry would probably remember these things. So, you know, that's, it's that perfect little um, Goldilocks effect, you know, not too hot, not too cold, just perfect. So that's where I thought we were going. So, sorry. Now, let me show you what actually ends up happening. If you haven't watched this yourself, I'm sure you probably already watched this. You're probably big fans of the talk. I don't know if I've ever seen it before, but okay. So here he is. He's sitting down. He's brought something with him to show Tyler. Ready? Let me max that out. Go. Easy. All good. Oh, I love that. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to give us a scribble. We're going to start. I'm going to go from here. So immediately, <laughs> I'm drawn to a bunch of ladies. It's a lot of ladies in the way this comes across. We're going to talk about females in your family. And I also feel like I have to talk about wife's family. Um, as well and just very strong maternal feelings so when we talk about wife's mother and i go in that direction i want to highlight that and that's one area that i go Whew. a bunch of different things uh i want to bring up this feeling of mother-in-law keeps hitting me over and over again with your 
wife's mother. Do you know if she inspired anybody to do the same career that she herself did? And so we'll break that down. For one, what was your wife's mother's job? She was a, she was a teacher. She was a English as a, as a second language teacher. Amazing. ESL teacher. Um, okay. A couple random things. Okay, so let's stop right there for the moment. Now, what I what I hope you picked up on is that the people who are filming this, you know, are going for the reaction shots, and they and he's Jerry's clearly emotional. He's um, giving out clear signs that Tyler is correct. So if you're cold reading somebody, now keep in mind, keep a lot of things in mind, that Tyler Henry has done thousands, if not tens of thousands of readings. He's been in this world for nine years as the Hollywood medium. So, you know, and he was doing readings before that. So it's, he's very, very skilled at reading people and reading their emotions and knowing what path to go on. So the first thing that Tyler says, remember, is there are bunches of women here. Now, why did he say that? The necklace that is brought out, the necklace is clearly not something that generally a man would wear it's a colorful necklace with all sorts of little animals on it it, it looks like it's longer than what would be um, a child would wear because or, or you know a child if a child had worn it it would be I guess they could wear it but it would be maybe a little too long for them depending on the age of the child I guess and you know might be dangerous you wouldn't put it on a three-year-old per se I mean it would just be in their mouth so <laughs> It probably is an adult female that owns that or owned that necklace. So, so when he says there are bunches of women, binders full of women, <laughs> that dates me. Um, <laughs> if there are bunches of women that are that are with him now, Tyler has all kinds of avenues. He has a lot of outs. He can go with pretty much anything. He's looking at him, slyly looking at him at Jerry to see his reaction. And Jerry doesn't give like a no way kind of, thing, or, you know, like, no, that's not accurate. Look, he gives it kind of like, he's kind of holding his lips in. I mean, you can see his dimple kind of look. Now I'm going to show you that again. The, the next thing I want you to look at is Tyler says your family and there's no reaction. He's still there with his lips in. And then after he says, um, I'm also thinking of, you know, your, I should mention your wife's family. And then the guys, like a count of one, two, he, his mouth opens. And then he, and then he, he's really uncomfortable in his chair and he puts his hands over his face at, you can tell Tyler hit. I mean, we're in, we're a minute into the reading and he's got him. He knows what direction, what path to go on. He knows that the mother-in-law, um, he knows that it's his wife's family, female, adult, dead, all right? And then so he throws in the mother-in-law line. And as soon as he does, you see an immediate reaction again, like a no way could you possibly know that. Well, you and I know there's lots of ways we can know that. And you know, because you follow this channel, I hope, that this is just manipulation of words and using the uh, visual clues that the sitter, the motivated sitter, remember, this is somebody who, even if they say they're skeptical, badly wants this reading. They're, they, they want there to be a connection and they will make that connection if the psychic doesn't clearly make it, they'll leap to it. They'll, they'll find a way of making that common um, hit. So I'm going to show you that briefly again. And let's just go back. It's, it's um, as you can see, it's a really short little clip. So let's go back to where he's, and he, then they scribble, scribble, scribble. So I don't think they meant to show the, the actual um, moment whenever he gets the hit on the in-law. Okay. You can see this necklace is kind of long enough that it's probably something that's not for a child, but it's probably clearly a female's necklace. Here we are 59 seconds into this video. And I'll put a link to this in the description of the video. So you guys can, well, I don't know, watch it over and over and over again. Easy. All good. Oh, I love that. Okay. okay. So I'm just going to give us a scribble. We're going to start. 
I'm gonna go from here. So immediately, <laughs> I'm drawn to a bunch of ladies. It's a lot of ladies in the way this comes across. We're gonna talk about females in your family, and I also feel like I have to talk about wife's family um, as well, and just very strong maternal feelings. So when we talk about wife's mother, and I go in that direction, I wanna highlight that, and that's one area that I go. He does say maternal right? Strong maternal. So that was another clue. And, and Jerry did not disagree with him. So it was pretty obvious it's going into the, to the mother-in-law. So his wife's mother. Whew. He's got a pause. A bunch here. of different things. Uh, I want to bring up this feeling of mother-in-law keeps hitting me over and over again. With your wife's mother, do you know if she inspired anybody to do the same career that she herself did? And so we'll break that down. For one, what was your wife's mother's job? She was a she was a teacher. She was a English as a, as a second language teacher, Amazing. ESL teacher. And I want to pause here for a second to look at his eyes. Let me back it up just a second. Look into this this man's eyes. They're they're already watery, so he's already has a lot of emotion. So don't give me any crap about this being something that's entertainment. No, no. He, Tyler Henry is manipulating this man's emotions. So see see how his eyes are watering here. It's and if we go back a little bit, you can see Tyler is trying to decide how he was going to go with this. He says, um, um, he's got he knows it's a mother-in-law. And also the man is wearing a wedding ring, so we know he's married. And Tyler practically jumps in his arms, so he knows who he is. Your wife's mother do you know if she inspired anybody to do the same career that she herself did okay now this is confusing um jerry jerry doesn't know the answer to this question remember how he talked about obscure statements that you should not make if you're the if you're the psychic because jerry doesn't know the answer to this and it almost looks like a no so tyler is going to go from there to spelling it out for him and keep in mind that at no time does Tyler ever mention this mother-in-law's name. There's nothing specific given. So always remember what is missing. Tyler does not um, ask, throws out this statement, which is kind of a generic statement. It, it might hit, it might not. And, and Jerry doesn't know the answer to it. So Jerry has to give him the answer. He says, okay, so what is it that your mother-in-law used to do? In other words, used to do. And so Tyler doesn't know this. Why can't he know this? And so we'll break that down. For one, what was your wife's mother's job? She was a, she was a teacher. She was a English as a, as a second language teacher, Amazing. ESL teacher. Um, okay, back to the scribbling. So part of the scribbling, I think, is a distraction. Um, it, it makes Tyler think about, he says he needs it to be able to, you know, be in contact with anybody. I think he uses it as a distraction um, to be able to say, you know, I'm trying to get this. I, he's scribbling in a notebook. Okay, you guys, that's it. It's his gimmick. All right. Now it gets a little more interesting here. Let's see if you catch this next little bit. Okay. A couple random things that are good to keep in mind. Um, when we talk about your wife i have to talk about a joke around a nature sign that was given on the day of significance and this was done for your wife in some way and i'm trying to figure out what this is they're having me joke about someone's ashes being spread and going oh no you, way. you don't want the wind to blow back no way you. no way and the no wind way. blows and there's a feeling of like trying to dodge someone's ashes because i don't want to get them in me on me rather and but there's a levity and a joy and a funniness with it okay so he completely stopped the part with the um the career eh, that wasn't going anywhere so tyler just moves on and they didn't edit it out but um you know the people who were <laughs> who were the 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 talk such a strange thing to call a show the talk so the talk doesn't edit it out because they don't know really what they're looking for right so they they leave it in thinking i i, I don't know what they were thinking they they weren't clearly thinking um, well, but then what do I do? You know, I got a hundred viewers. They got 180,000 viewers. <laughs> okay. So what? <laughs> I can't win you guys. I just can't win. Um, so <laughs> what happens is he completely skips a part about the career and he, 
not going anywhere. It would have been a big hit if it had hit, right? Um, I mean, Tyler could have, if he had hot read him he, and knew his, his the Jerry's mother-in-law was an ESL teacher, that would have been a big deal. He could have been talking about languages and, and you know, why am I getting these multiple languages? Why am I getting, you know, that would have been a lot more interesting teaching, you know, that would have been a little bit better hit. Still knowable. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but um, he went with this ashes. Now, remember what Tyler said? He said, I am getting this strange thing. I just got to throw it out there. Tyler's always saying that kind of stuff. In other words, I'm going to just throw shit at the wall and see what hits. Um, and he says, I'm getting a, a nature sign on a day of significance for your wife. Okay, stop right there. And what did he just say? A nature sign. What is that? I mean, you already know he's talking about the mother-in-law. Or his mother's family, I should say. His wife's family. We know he's talking about his wife's family. So what is a nature sign? Are you thinking a like a sign with a post on it that says like no swimming or, um, you know, um, crocodiles, <laughs> beware of crocodiles or pariah fish. <laughs> Are you thinking of something like that or, you know, pick up your dog or <laughs> no dogs at the park? Are you thinking of a nature sign? Uh, you know, uh, Smokey the Bear kind of sign? Or are you talking about a sign like a nature sign, like a feather, a bird, a bird song, a, a flower, a cardinal. That's kind of, I think, where Tyler Henry could have been going to, because that's a, another trope of psychics, is that they use that signs kind of nonsense. And um, so a nature sign on the day of significance for your wife. Okay. That could be anything. Anything that Jerry wants it to mean is what it means. Okay. So it's just another generic thing that until you sit down and you really look at these readings, you don't even notice that bit. It's it's like it's invisible to you. Tyler's very smooth. He's very good at throwing these things out. And then the next thing he says, did you catch it? What he says is someone's ashes scattered. He did not say your mother-in-law's ashes. He says some, they are telling me, they, whoever they is, are telling me. Well, Tyler, if they're telling you something, why don't you ask them something like, you know, what's the woman's name? And maybe her last four digits of her social security number or her phone number when she was born or something. I mean, something like it has some relevance, not like, so Someone wants to talk about these ashes and this that the ashes were coming at you and you're dodging the ashes so they don't get on you. This is a trope, right? We've all heard of this. Everybody who has had anything to do with ashes being distributed are going to make that thought, that comment, that little bit of, you know, make some levity, some fun out of what it is that's this this moment you're having of scattering a person's ashes. So this is common. If if it wasn't said out loud as a joke, then somebody was thinking it. And when Tyler pulls it out as if he's like talking to the dead or something, then that does give you that feeling that maybe he's onto something. But no, it's just a common thing that people do. For example, I'll throw out another one. Um, and I've heard this a bunch of times, but it seems so specific after somebody has died, especially if it's a child or um, your, you know, a, a spouse that you were with for a very long time, you still retain a piece of their clothing that you smell. It's very common. And so what people will say is they'll keep their item in a plastic bag so that they can open it up and smell it once in a while or, you know, protect that smell. Or, you know, they go into the closet and then they go in and they smell the clothing. I mean, this is very common, but it feels very specific. I had a mother tell me that there's no way that the psychic could possibly have known because there was no way anybody else would have known that she went into her, her closet, 
opened up the plastic bag that contained her child's christening gown and her child had died not long after that and she opened it up and smelled it and then she zipped it back up and then the psychic mentioned something about it and she said i just fell i could not even believe it there's no way that psychic could have known it so they must be real okay that's a common barnum statement that seems extremely extremely precise but it's not when you think about it so let me just play this last little bit over here again so you can see what i'm talking about because i want you to see um let's see if you caught it I think it's fascinating how this works. Now, listen again. Let's see if I can get right to the moment. I mean, this guy is like falling over onto the floor here. He's so into this. And going, oh, no wait, you don't want the wind to blow. Wait, wait, I got to go back a little bit more. Sorry, everybody. You can see right here this. When I move this, can you see um, on the screen right, uh, right above the red line? You can see that's one of those moments that's replayed often. Um, it's a thing that that um, YouTube has out, you can see how it's got a little bump right here in the, can you see where my mouse is right here? Most replayed is that little bump right there. And the other bump is down over here where he's hugging on him, obviously knowing him. So here's this little bump. So listen up. A couple random things that are good to keep in mind. Um, when we talk about your wife, I have to talk about a joke around a nature sign that was given on the day of significance. And this was done for your wife in some way. And I'm trying to figure out what this is. They're having me joke about someone's ashes being spread and going, oh, no you, way. Don't, you don't want the wind to blow back No on way, you. no way, And the no wind way. blows and there's this feeling of like trying to dodge someone's ashes because I don't want to get them in me, on me rather. And But there's a levity and a joy and a funniness with this. And then remember that I'm saying this with mom's side of family, with her mother. I just see like the weather clearing, things opening up, like clouds parting. It just comes through as like new opportunity. <gasps> So it comes down, it's a lot to... Can I talk about this now? Sure. Right. So this is a sign of a motivated sitter is somebody who's like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you, Tyler, because the, the immediate, the, he's bought into it. Now he's in an emotional state. You can look at him. And as you see, his, not only his eyes are uh, glistening from, from wetness, from, you know, emotion, but you can see his face has really gotten um, very sparkly. You can see that he's sweating. He's... Um, you know, because of course they put all this makeup and stuff on him. So he shouldn't be sweating. So he's sweating and he's clearly emotional. Tyler can see that. I mean, you don't have to have those lights on him to be able to see this happening. He's obviously in an emotional state where Tyler is reading his emotions. I mean, this guy's an open book. He's squirming. He's all over the place. And he can't wait to tell Tyler the story of this. And that's what they do. And I'm, I'm not going to show it. The story of his uh, mother-in-law and who she was and, you know, what happened on that day of the funeral. So people don't realize how much information they're giving the, the psychic. And the better the psychic, the psychic who has more skill, the just, you know, they could just read that like it's an open book practically. Now, remember also that this is edited. And this is about a, um, a two minute, two, let me see, two minute ish reading, three minute. Most of the time is, is now uh, made up by uh, Jerry talking about his mother-in-law and how he was this big skeptic. And now he's not a skeptic. He's a true believer. And oh my gosh, you're the most amazing thing and on and on. So, all, you know, a large portion of this is just praise. But when they get back to the camera, uh, to the couch, um, let me sh show you this again. So when they get back to the couch, they're sitting here and this guy is obviously really, really emotional about it. And the woman on the couch is just like, oh my gosh, you're the best. You're the most amazing. Look at this audience. You can't really see here, but look at all these women right here. And this is a woman I could also, you can't really tell. One, two, three, four, five, six. The, the people who, who, who are into this kind of world are almost all women. So now I don't know what the talk is, but I guess it's a show like a daytime show gossipy thing, but it really does play to um, women and victimizes them because now all of these women in the audience and all the watchers of the show think that somehow the psychic has been endorsed by this, this show and all the people that they adore, you know, Jerry O'Connell and his, and, and whoever that other woman is. And, you know, this is a big deal. So they think that the psychic has been vetted by this TV show. 
and they think that the network has probably vetted them. So it becomes this cycle where the psychic doesn't um, that that uh, we can't that the enablers are the media, and the media is perpetuating this this cycle. And the media says, "Oh, it's all entertainment. It's all fun and, and everything." This isn't fun. He he's clearly having his emotions and his memories manipulated, and that of his wives whenever he comes home and he tells his wife what happened and then all the family that will believe it because you know well why not so everybody's memories of their mother of their mom and mother-in-law are manipulated and it all ties to this necklace which has nothing to do with it other than tyler was able to make a guess that it was probably a female that he was looking for it didn't have to be he could have said you brought me this necklace but I have a man that wants to come through and it's a man who's very authoritative. He was in commanding. He was a man, a person in, uh, in position who, um, you know, cared greatly about his community and he wanted to do the best for the community. That person's coming forward. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this, but <laughs> I don't know. But somebody who, who is like a manly man, he was like the, the leader of his like a sports team, like the, 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 like boys looked up to him and, and something about being out in the open air and, and physically fit. And you know what I mean? I'm going for football. I'm going for Charles, who is his grandfather, Jerry's grandfather. I mean, Tyler could have gone that avenue if he'd wanted to. He could have just skipped the necklace and said, I have somebody pushing. Maybe we'll get back to this, the owner of this necklace. But somebody's pushing forward right now and taking this opportunity to push themselves, present themselves forward. He was always that kind of person, wasn't he? And then that would have gotten another emotion out of out of Jerry. You know, he probably would have started crying. He probably, you know, is the grandfather. Your grandfather's watching over you. He wants the best for you. And, you know, same kind of thing. So that's if he was hot reading. But this is so easy to cold read this guy. It was... I mean, I don't know if it's because he's an actor, but he's just just so expressive and just unable to hide his emotions. But again, remember, this isn't a test. This isn't something where um, they said, whatever you do, don't give any feedback to the psychic because this, no, this is completely an infomercial for the Netflix show that Tyler Henry has. That's all it is, completely. And just another example of how cold reading works. Once you slow it down, and you actually look at what is being said. And we had video in this case to be able to see it. We didn't have to. This could have been a phone reading. We probably would have been able to pick up on it just from the breathing, the intake, the intake of breath by the um, the motivated sitter who badly wants us to be real. So that's it, folks. Um, that's how easy it is. You do not have to have hot reading. You don't have to go to Ancestry. You don't need newspapers.com. Do enough readings. You get skilled at this. Have a clever editor who will clean it all up for you so that um, only the best parts show. Boom, you're in business. I don't know how you'll be able to sleep at night knowing that you're manipulating people's emotions, um, especially people who are grieving and bringing them to tears in this way. And not for a good reason. This is an entertainment, folks. Thanks for watching.